Hello everybody and welcome to Hot Topics, where as you can see on the screen behind me, today we're going to be talking about Deep Doctrine or Life Enhancement. What am I talking about? Well, the vast majority of sermons being preached are all about life enhancement. How to make you a better you. Three steps to be a better. Five steps to be a better. The secret steps to be a better. I think you get the point. Now, unfortunately, these life enhancement sermons or sermonettes <laughs> or devotionals have become part of the DNA of the modern evangelical church. And so people go to church for motivation, for a feel-good, funny message. They go to church like they would go to regular secular seminars to try to find a couple tips how to make one better and more successful throughout the week. And this just keeps repeating and repeating and repeating to the point where deep, sound, biblical doctrine is considered boring, non-relevant, too dogmatic, old school. Now, why is this a hot topic today? Well, I want you to think about what's happening in the world right now. Coronavirus, worldwide pandemic. Question. All those life enhancement pick-me-up sermonettes. What kind of lasting value have they had on people as they try to survive through this worldwide crisis? Nothing. Deep doctrine, you know, the long, boring, why do I care about the historical context and the original languages and all this stuff? Deep doctrine. The weightiness of God's holy word. In fact, just go over to Psalm 119. verse 89 forever O Lord your word is settled in heaven do, do you see the weightiness of that statement the authority of that statement right God's word is forever eternal settled in heaven God's word is weighty God's word is heavy And what we need is not life enhancement. What we need is deep doctrine. We need the weightiness of God's holy word. Uh, think of a, a, a boat. Um, what is that 
weighty part of the boat that keeps it from capsizing. It's called the ballast, right? Every boat needs a ballast. Something heavy, something weighty that will prevent the boat from capsizing when the storm comes. A lot of times, boaters don't appreciate the ballast when it's beautiful and sunny. <laughs> but I promise you, every boater appreciates the ballast when the storm comes. Right? God's Word, which is forever settled in heaven, is that ballast in our lives. that is weighty, that is heavy. So that when the storms of life come, such as a corona virus world pandemic, we have this deep doctrine, so heavy, so weighty, the gravitas of God's holy word on the throne of our hearts. That when the storm comes, we don't capsize. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. I've spoken to many of you since we've been locked down, <laughs> self-isolation. We've spoken via FaceTime, Zoom, and, and so forth. And, and I tell you, what, what's great is I'm not sensing panic, fear, hopelessness, and helplessness. I'm not sensing those things in you. That's because of the ballast of God's word securing you. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. And in verse 11, we are told that Christ gave to his church pastor teachers. What is the role of the pastor teacher? What is the role of the elders? Verse 12, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. Equipping, it, it literally means for the um, for the, what's the word I want to use? Uh, kartizo is the Greek word. For the um, rebuilding, restoring of the saints. Taking us more and more from saying yes to sin to more and more saying yes to the Spirit. The role of the pastor teacher, who, by the way, ha can have the greatest impact from the pulpit, the role is, is, is to equip, restore, rehabilitate the saints, believers, for the work of service. Watch this. To the building up of the body of Christ. As you continue to be fed sound, deep, weighty doctrine, not only does it allow you in the power of the Holy Spirit to move from sinfulness towards Christ-likeness, it also allows you 
to be able to love on and minister to others in the body so together we are being built up on the solid foundation not of life enhancement principles but rather of deep holy sound doctrine verse 13 until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god to a mature man, more and more like Christ, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Did you just see the weightiness of those statements there? I love that. Unity of the faith, knowledge of the Son of God, mature in Christ, the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Watch this, verse 14. As a result, watch me, of deep, sound doctrine, where together we are moving in the power of the Holy Spirit towards Christ-likeness and the ballast of God's weighty, eternal, authoritative word is so thick and so heavy and so rich in our lives. Verse 14, as a result of that, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves. And carried about all over the place by every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men by craftiness in deceitful scheming do you see it all the life enhancement sermons that have been taught over the past several years can do nothing to weigh down, strengthen, solidify people during this immense storm we're dealing with. As I'm looking at all of you, you all have something in common. You're locked down and self-isolated. You're not bringing in an income right now. You're not certain when the next time will be when you are able to bring in an income. You've got bills, you've got worries, you've got concerns. On top of all that, you're trying to be as cautious as you can be so that you don't contract this virus. The life that you had three months ago has drastically changed. And you're not sure how it's going to look when you come out of this. When you come out of this. If you come out of this. But you're not panicking. You're not getting tossed all over the place. You're not scrambling. And you're not blaming God.
You know what is happening with you? The ballast of God's holy word is keeping you calm, it's keeping you steady, it's keeping you secure. You know that God is sovereign over the coronavirus. You know that God knows the end from the beginning. You know God is omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. You know God is the Alpha, the Omega. You know that your life has been ordained by God, is in full control of Almighty God, and that absolutely nothing in your life will ever happen outside the will of God. You know this. You know that the coronavirus is not wearing the crown. You know that Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, is wearing the crown. You know how you know this? Because think about all that sound, deep, heavy, weighty, holy doctrine you've been exposed to and you've been digesting over these years. I'm looking at you right now, Michelle. <laughs> You look so calm and comfortable. You're just sitting there. You got your Bible open, your notes. It's like, <laughs> right? You do realize you can look out your window. I can look out my window. You're not going to see the vast majority of the population calm and secure in Christ. In fact, the unfortunate problem is that many people who over the years have been attending these life enhancement, not church services, I'd call them seminars. They're just held in what's called a church. They're not calm and secure right now. You know why? Because all that life enhancement fluff has no weight. You see, you have been sitting under that gravitas of God's holy word. You know, God's word that is forever settled in heaven, immovable. And as a result, as chaos is happening around us, and in many cases, even impacting us, we're not getting tossed all over the place. We're not children being tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine. By the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming, we speak the truth in love and we are growing up in all aspects into Him who is the head, even Christ. From whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies according to the proper working, working of each individual part causing the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. I've had during this time obviously Many people contact me trying to cope with the existence of the coronavirus, the potential um, 
contraction of the coronavirus and in some cases actually loved ones having contracted it. And as a pastor, you you can see the difference, at least I can see the difference, between people, and I've had people contact me from, go to various different churches throughout various different parts of the states as well as other parts of the world who follow our teaching. And I can tell the difference immediately when I speak to somebody who professes to be a Christian, I can tell the difference if they've been sitting under deep doctrine or life enhancement sermons. People who have sat under deep doctrine like you guys, you're not calling me looking for fluff. You just want to be reminded once again of God's deep truth, God's unchanging truth, God's solid truth. You want me to pray with you, you want to pray with me, and that's it. As compared to some others who have called, and it grieves me because the ones who are supposed to protect the flock and feed the flock, the elders, instead chose to try to entertain and make the flock feel good. And the result, worldwide pandemic, these people Profess, people who profess faith in Christ are shaken to the core. And your heart goes out to them. And as I try to just speak to them God's truth and give them sound doctrine, you could just tell that they're not used to it. They're, they're just looking for a quick pick me up, feel good, something I can give them, something they can just grasp onto for the next few hours, and there's no weightiness in what they're looking for. And it's sad. And again, it's the leaders, the spiritual leaders who have been entrusted to teach sound doctrine to the flock of God who've been purchased by the blood of Christ. And these elders have been appointed to be elders, pastor, teachers by the Holy Spirit. And yet, the flock is weak. The flock is in panic. Life enhancement works. Let me quote, works, unquote, <laughs> works when there are no storms. When life is sunny, right? Doesn't work when the storm comes because life enhancement messages are focused on the person. Deep doctrine is focused on God, right? And so, Look at Titus chapter two. Look what the Apostle Paul said to a young pastor, Titus, who was responsible to get things in order in all those house churches there on the island of Crete. Titus chapter two, 
Look at verse 1. Paul said to Titus, But as for you, speak the things, preach the things which are fitting for life enhancement, feel good, sound doctrine. In other words, Paul was saying to Titus, Give them the ballast of God's holy word. He repeats it, verse 15. These things speak, exhort, reprove with all authority. Just look at those words. You see the weightiness of those words? And let no one get around sound doctrine. Think about doctors in the physical realm. Think about a doctor giving to somebody medication that absolutely does not help the problem and actually brings more harm to it. We would call that what? Medical malpractice. Think of a pastor who gives to the flock of God fluff that cannot truly help them become more Christ-like and actually can hurt them because they focus on themselves rather than on God. We would call that spiritual malpractice. And so how is it that we, during this very, very stormy season, how is it that we don't tip over? The weightiness of God's holy word. And what's so nice is that those of you who are now attending here live on Zoom, you're getting just a little short teaching. But you've been equipped when you disconnect from Zoom right now to take your Bible and to continue to study it on your own. And as a result, God's holy word just gets heavier and weightier and more authoritative in your life. And so together, we study deep doctrine. We want the Bible, nothing but the Bible, and absolutely everything in the Bible. We want to know the historical context. We want to know the original language. We want to be able to interpret Scripture with other Scripture. Give me Scripture is what your cry is. Give me the book. Well, of course. You understand that deep doctrine leads to higher doxology, exaltation, worship of God. You understand deep doctrine, stable and steady you. You understand deep doctrine
higher desire to become more and more Christ-like. You understand deep doctrine. Yes, even in the midst of this very stormy season, deep doctrine, your life, brings glory and honor to Christ. And that's what it's about. Amen.